Google Investing Demystified video series. For someone to accept that they can't beat a market is a key moment in their investing lives. And perhaps without knowing it at first, they will be much better off as a result. At this point, you're at least hopefully considering a couple of things. One, the ability to outperform the markets is incredibly hard to do, and it's important to be realistic about whether you can or not. Two, conceding that you can't outperform the financial markets yourself or pick one out of the 10 investment funds that can is a sensible and very liberating conclusion for most investors. It ultimately makes life a lot easier and wealthier, and please don't ignore that. In this video, I'll be discussing why the only equity investment you'll need is an index tracker that tracks the broadest, cheapest set of stocks, the World Equity Index. For someone who can't beat the markets, each dollar invested in the markets around the world is presumed equally smart. We don't think we can outperform by moving money around and owning shares in different proportions to that the market forces have already decided. So if we assume for a second that the market refers only to the US stock market and that Apple shares represent 3% of the overall value then 3% of our equity holdings should be Apple shares. If we do anything other than this, we're somehow saying that we are more clever, more informed. We're saying that we can outperform the market. But why stop at the US market? If there is 9 trillion invested in the US stock market and 1 trillion in the UK market, there's no reason to think that the UK market is any less informed or efficient than the US one. And we should have 1 tenth of our money in the UK and 9 tenths in the US markets if we could only pick those two. But of course, we can go beyond the US and UK and allocate to all other markets and geographies in the world that we can and in proportions of their share of the world equity markets. This world exposure is far less US Europe dominated than it used to be and thus more diversified across the world geographies and sectors. So on your screen is what the multi-trillion dollar financial markets are telling you is the right prices and split in values between countries. You really think you know better? If you underweight one country, you would effectively be saying that a dollar invested in that country is less clever, informed, etc. than a dollar invested in the country that you allocate relatively more to. You would essentially claim to see an advantage from allocating money differently from how the multi-trillion dollar international financial markets have, which you're not in a position to do unless you bravely think you can beat the markets. So being simpler, cheaper, and maximally diversified, the world equity portfolio is the best one for you. The typical home investor bias, so being over-invested in the UK where I live, in my case, not only meant that our investment portfolio were unhelpfully geographically concentrated, but also that it moved in tandem with our other assets. So your locally concentrated investment portfolio would go down in value at the same time as you would lose your job, your house value would decline, your pension would be worth less, your insurance and potential future inheritance would be less valuable and so on. All because it would be based in the UK in, in my case. A world equity portfolio gets away from this geographic concentration. And so on top of being better in its own right, therefore it's also better because it de-risks your non-investment portfolio assets. So to emphasize, not only is the world equity investment more diversified, so think less risk, and have less fees, so think higher returns, but since we're simply buying the markets as broadly as we can, it's a very simple portfolio to construct and thus very easy. In fact, it's perhaps the easiest and most logical way to invest your money. So what will you make from equities? Obviously, if I knew the future of stock markets, I'd be richer than Warren Buffett. But I think a good rule of thumb is that over the past 200 years, investors in equity markets have made roughly 4 to 5% above inflation a year. That has obviously varied a huge deal from near bankruptcy to lottery type returns, but net of all those fluctuations, I think it's a reasonable statement to say that to take the kind of risk 
equity investors have taken in the past, you expect a similar return. And that return is around 4-5% to above inflation. Someone willing to step into the market at a moment of high panic would be expected to be compensated for taking that extra risk. So the expected return is not a constant number, but dependent on the risk of the market. The 4-5% above inflation is an expected return based on an average level of risk. Of course, reality may well be very different and you need to be sure you can handle the risk of equity markets, but more on that later on. So in summary, you only need to buy one investment for your stock market exposure. Buy the broadest, cheapest index tracker for world equities. You'll be much better off in the long run. In the next video, we'll discuss how you can combine this world equity exposure with a low risk asset to tailor your portfolio to your risk preferences. But it really is that simple. Unless you can beat the markets, you are well served by owning just one equity exposure, an investment that blindly tracks the world equity markets. If you found yourself lazily nodding along to this video, don't forget how important it is. I'm telling you that you should likely only ever own one type of equity again in the future. That is huge. And your life would most likely be much better off for it. Thank you very much for watching. With Regis Media's video subscription service, you'll receive expert views on investing from around the world. Videos come fully branded to your firm and are delivered within two weeks of signing up. Find out more by visiting regismedia.com.